Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, June 6th, 2018. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front over there in Asia, it's up. Over in Europe, only CAC is down a little bit. Here in the States, boom, 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 up, up, up. Oil mixed, gold, beep. Bitcoin, bop, not a lot. But hey, that Dow up more than 300 points as bank shares rallied on higher interest rates. Yep, on higher interest rates. And the NASDAQ composite, boom, up again. Tech is up more than 6% over the past month to a record high. So all this talk about tariffs and, eh, it's only talk. There's going to be changes made. We don't see a trade war at this time. The markets are reflecting it. And speaking about interest rates, hey, how about your trend alert? Trend alert. Cash-juiced markets ready to crash? Be prepared. After correcting in March, the NASDAQ hit a new high, and May was the best month for stocks since January. That's right. Read all about it and much more in your trend alert because let's go back to rising interest rates. European retreat, nervous investors pull $11 billion from region. Euro Leary Italy loses faith in the EU. That has to do with your trend alert and where these markets are going. The new Prime Minister of Italy, Mr. Conti, said yesterday, quote, A new wind is blowing in Italy. Again, we are saying what virtually no one else is. This is the beginning of the destruction of the Eurozone. Quote, he says, if populism is listening to the needs of the people, we accept such a label. And there are two parts, big parts, to the new coalition with Cinque Stelle and Lega. One of them is to turn around Italy's economy, and the other one, confront the migration crisis that has brought 750,000 people to Italy's shores since 2011. Huh, 2011. What happened in 2011? No one speaks about it. The slimy, arrogant, Nobel piece of crap prize winner, along with the slimy Sarkozy and the crappy Cameron and Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton destroyed Libya, slaughtered tens of thousands of people, turned the place into a hellhole. And Gaddafi warned, when I go, you will have a migrant crisis that you won't be able to handle. Oh, but let's not talk about that. Let's just really be stupid because that's all it is. That's what the media is. It's prostitute crap. No one talks about this. Anyway, moving on, the other issue, the economy and the euro. Most businesses don't want Italy to leave the euro because of the chaos and uncertainty the move would bring and because any benefits would be short-lived. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Huh. Hey, Cazzone, how long has Italy been a country, huh? How many millennia morons without the euro. You think they could do it on their own? Of course not. 
We're too stupid to think for ourselves. We just buy. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. You got it. Read your trend alert. No bullshit, no horse shit. Just facts. Again, Europeans retreat. Nervous investors pull 11 billion from region. Investors have pulled nearly 11 billion out of European equity exchange traded funds in the past three months. During May, more than 3.7 billion of investment left Europe equity ETFs. It marks the most money flowing out of European company shares via tracker funds since data gathering began in 2008. This is real. But you know who we could blame all this on? Yeah, you know who. The Russians. Hey, don't believe me? How about Soros, huh? Isn't it something what people with money are doing? Nobody gives money to occupy peace. Nobody of the big guys wants to support the truth in trends. Rather, they support... Warning, warning, bullshit alert. George Soros said, quote, I don't know if Salvani, he's the head of Lega, was funded by Moscow, but the public has a right to know. And they get away with it. And moving on to some other trends, going back to gold prices, bloop, flat, all about interest rates. Oil, boop, you know what's going on. More supply than demand right now. And more talk coming out of India, by the way, talking with the Saudis that they're going to increase production. And in the United States, you ready for this? U.S. crude inventories rose 2.1 million barrels in a week to June 1st. And the Energy Information Administration said U.S. crude output hit a record 10.8 million barrels a day in the week. U.S. oil production is up, you ready for this? 1.5 million barrels per day in a year. How much did OPEC and non-OPEC members cut back? 1.8 million barrels a day. Just the United States is basically making that up. So that's the pressure on oil. It's a simple story. Sky-high lumber adds to housing costs. Again, you have a housing shortage in the United States for the lower ends. Costs have gone up. They're averaging about $3,000 on average to the cost of each house just on lumber. And then you have wages going up. You have other commodity prices going up. The cost of housing is going up. But wages aren't going up. And what else do we have here? Ah, Apple targets phone overuse. Apple Inc. unveiled new controls to help people curb the amount of time they spend on iPhones and iPads, as well as to allow parents to remotely track and limit their children. Blah, 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 blah. So, here's my phone. Beep. They upgraded it. I'm lucky to have made 200 calls in 18 years using a cell phone. And I go to the airport and call the car, I'm at gate so and so. My office needs to reach me, they can get me when I get to the hotel. If I remember, I put the phone in the glove compartment of my car when I got to travel a decent distance. And that's it. Why? You know why. I've been doing research on this, working for the cellular telecommunications industry since the early 90s when I did a 
trend report for them and learned at that time the dangers of phones. They were even more dangerous back then. Had these big things in the back of trunks with an aerial. And all the data that comes out about how dangerous these are health-wise and mentally. So I don't use one. And if you don't believe me, look at the next big trend that we keep writing about that on-trendpreneurs are going to cash in on. Clean phones. But even with a clean phone, I don't want any. Moving on. Western cities want a slow flood of Chinese home buying. Nothing works. They're putting on taxes, restrictions in Vancouver and Toronto and Australia, all over, trying to stop the flow of Chinese coming in. But you know the story. Since they came into the World Trade Organization, their middle class income went from 5% in 2001 to around 35% today. So what's 35% of 1.3 billion people? About 455,000 people. How many people does America have? About 320 million. How many does Canada have? Eh, 36 million. And what about Australia? 24 million. It's about 370,000 people. China has more middle class than those three countries have people plus. The business of China is business. The business of America is war. As with the other countries like Canada and Australia that join in the merry fight of murder that all the freaks love so much. And speaking of China... Tiananmen anniversary finds party in full control. Activists hope that more liberal system would evolve over time, have evaporated. It's a communist country, and all those low-life, slimy freaks that took us to war, beginning with Harry Rottenheld Truman with the Korean War, with Lyndon, you should have died earlier, Johnson. With Nixon, the Watergate freak. With one after another, taking us to war against the communists. But it's okay to do business with them. Now, of course, I'm not saying good or bad about it. I'm showing the hypocrisy of it. And all of this tariff talk, what nobody talks about is why do we have such a large trade deficit with China, with Mexico? Because our manufacturers got their products manufactured in those countries for cheaper labor. It's not like we're buying stuff that the Chinese and Mexicans invented. Nike and Levi and all the other stuff and your automobiles aren't designed and created by them. Our companies sold us out. Our congressmen and senators have sold us out. And our presidents have sold us out. And again, I don't agree with just about anything from Trump other than on trade. And moving on to some other trends, on speaking of Canada, Canada poised to approve legal marijuana sales. Pot shops could be opened by late summer. Canada's government is poised to approve sweeping cannabis legislation as soon as this week and could launch marijuana sales by late summer. But hey, you knew all about it a long time ago. Reefer, money, madness, and oh, don't forget, look back at your uh, Friday Trends special. This is just the beginning. It's the end of Prohibition in the 1930s. So, you could get on board and get high, 
on profits. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.